Hey you guys, welcome back to Bright Violet Arts. My name is Valerie and I'm really glad you're here today because I'm so excited to share my theme for January 2022. This is Lucky Cat, also known as Miniki Niko, who is a pop culture phenomenon and traditional Japanese figure who is said to bring good fortune to his owner. I can't wait to take you through the setup process. Let's get started. Okay, this pretty baby is my white vegan leather uh, A5 notebook from Archer and Olive. I set it up in my last video with a moon magic theme and it was really, really fun. If you're interested and you wanna check it out, it's linked above. My materials today include brush markers, brush pens, fine liners, uh, colored pencil, metallic watercolor, and gel pen. Most of my brush markers are by Tombow, but I do have this little guy who's very similar to a Tombow. He's a Zebra Mild Liner brush pen. These are the gel pens I'm using. They are optional. The white gel pen is just going to be for covering up mistakes that I make as I draw. And the gold gel pen is a base for my gold metallic watercolor, which I've got here. These are my brush pens. I've got a red one by Pentel. This is a double-ended Tombow Funasuke pen. It's got a gray end and a black end. And then my last one is a Copic Multiliner in brush size small. I'll be doing some color blending with colored pencils. So getting started with the cover page, I'm gonna outline my pencil sketch with the black Tombow Funasuke pen. And then I'm gonna bring in my Tombow markers to just add that first layer of color. Most of the coloring for all of the spreads this time is going to be with marker and I'm just using like the gold gel pen and the colored pencil to add some optional details. The background that I'm going to create for Lucky Kitty, I want it to be like rays of color that are coming back from a single point behind him on the horizon. So I'm going to use uh, what's called single point perspective to draw that. And the way I'm going to get this effect is I've drawn in a pencil dot in the middle of my page and every time I draw a stripe behind him with my ruler, I'm going to make sure my ruler passes through that single dot. So if you're not familiar with Lucky Cat, one way to identify it is that you'll see uh, either a drawing or a statue of a cat with one paw or sometimes both paws raised in the air. And that is a beckoning gesture. It's often believed that if you put a lucky cat statue or sign in your storefront or your shop, that that gesture of the wave with the raised paw will beckon in customers to your business. And of course that would bring with it prosperity and good fortune. Lucky Cat comes in every kind of art style and color scheme, um, everything that I could even imagine and more I found on Pinterest when I was researching uh, this as a theme idea. And another fun thing to share is that this is my second year in a row using Lucky Cat as my January bullet journal theme. I did this theme last year and I painted it in watercolor or like watercolor brush pens. And I used a totally different color scheme um, it was really different than this, but it, you know, Lucky Cat nonetheless. And so I've got this idea that I'm going to do Lucky Cat like next January too, and I'll just do it every year and every year, you know, I'll, I'll put a different spin on it. If you are interested in seeing the Lucky Cat setup that I did for January 2021, then you can find it on my Instagram page, which is at Bright Violet Arts, and I will link some of those um, specific pictures in my description box. So back to my setup here, on the left side of the spread, I'm just gonna round out the look of that picture with a miniature calendar and the word January hand lettered. I'm using that double ended pen to do the hand lettering because one side is black for the letters and the other side is gray for the drop shadow. The colored pencils are just for adding some, some blending onto the top layer of marker. I added washi tape, which is my favorite thing. And then I decided it needed one more thing. So I created this little doodle and I just fell in love with it. Um, this little double heart flourish. And I thought it worked well to finish off the cover page, but I liked it enough that I decided to make it a repeating motif in the design throughout the rest of the spreads. So you'll see that same flourish 
again, you know, on, on upcoming pages. And now I'm moving on to my calendar spread. Just using a grid pattern here, but I'm leaving one space above each date box because I want that line to add some washi tape for color. So I'll lay down the washi tape and trim it to fit with my craft knife. I'm writing the dates directly on top of the washi tape with my fine liner, and then I'm gonna let it dry to avoid smearing. So something that I did as a design element in this setup is I played with scale a lot. If you look at this kitty, it's exactly the same kitty, like exactly, exactly as the one on the cover page. It's just scaled up a lot bigger. And of course I've let it hang off the side of the page. It's such an easy way to like learn how to draw one thing and then use it, you know, for five or six different illustrations in a bullet journal setup by just drawing it in at a different scale each time. Um, and you'll see what I mean as we go. I'm going to repeat this over and over. You're going to see this cat so many times, but I feel like he looks different and fresh on every page. For my hand lettering, I like to sketch it out first in pencil the way it should look, and then I'm almost just filling it in with my brush marker. I'm not inventing it with the brush marker strokes. I'm really just coloring in my pencil lines. A style choice that I liked for these cats is the really thick outline, the excessively thick outline. So I always used um, like a 0.8 fine liner to do the inking in of the pencil drawing. And then after I had it colored, I would come back one more time with this brush marker to add the thick outline. This gold watercolor is just a top coat for my gold gel pen. And then here is that cutesy doodle again from the first page. I have uh, scaled that up as well. When I color the hearts, I want them to look puffy. So I'm gonna do marker on the left side and then as a highlight, the right side will be colored pencil and a white gel pen line. This setup is going to be for habit tracking, goals, and monthly tasks. This illustration is supposed to depict the lucky cat receiving old money. To get the look of the coins flying in the air, I made the circle shapes different. Like they're not always round. Sometimes the coins are flat and that's just to show they're spinning at different angles. I am using a gray Tombow to add a like a left side shadow to him. And then of course I need to make the coins as shiny as possible with more watercolor. So now I've uh, busted out my calendar stamp here. This is my miniature calendar stamp that I will link in the description box. Um, it has saved me so many hand cramps from having to draw out all those little tiny calendars. So these boxes are for goals and tasks for the whole month. And then this little highlighted area is gonna be a place that I'll put notes. I felt like I had a little extra space here at the last minute, so I added a seventh habit to track. And here we are on the first weekly spread. So again, this is the same cat from the cover page and the calendar. I have just um, scaled him up really, really big. Using that full-size Tombow brush marker to outline him. He's pretty cute. I took my time a little more on the blending for this large size one because it shows a little more when they get that big. And then these are the boxes I'm drawing in for uh, my dailies and for a task box there on the bottom. And just to finish off that extra space, I filled it up with sparkles because I don't know, I think sparkles look like he's lucky, like his wave is lucky. Similar to my belief that sparkles indicate magic, which I talked about in my last video. And here we go on the second weekly, same cat one more time, only now he's really tiny. Just as cute as ever, and I'm sure just as powerful in bringing good fortune. I'm adding little calico spots to all my cats because Wikipedia told me that the traditional Minikiniko um, was a Japanese bobtail breed, and that apparently had calico spots. 
All right, so I'm stamping my archival stamp ink on top of washi tape directly, which is normally fine if you let it dry. But I messed up. This is the moment where I smeared Thursday and Friday. You can see that. But I'm actually okay with it. I, I decided to leave it. I could have redone it, but it didn't seem that important. And I try my hardest to make my bullet journal perfect, but I do have to live with imperfections just like everybody else that, you know, loves this hobby. So on my third weekly spread, I decided to stack my six daily boxes here just to give me a little more room for playing around on the right hand side. I am going to use that same cat again, but this time I'm doing what I refer to as the slice, which is where I just take a slice out of my illustration and I don't draw the left or the right hand side, I just draw what's in the middle. And this guy's just about done. I'm gonna add my typical to-do area and my notes area, and then we're wrapped up for week three. All right, week four, same cat. I wanna mention, when I stamp out my days of the week, I don't have a special stamp that says sat and sun abbreviated. Those are full words that say Saturday and Sunday. I'm only inking up the first three letters of those stamps to get that abbreviation. Okay, and this is my last spread of the month. This is the reflection and memory page. And I did decide to do a separate illustration for this one instead of recycling my same kitty. This kitty I just really liked because he's all set to go. It's like he's been prosperous and he's ready for the year. He's got his little fish and his little bag of money and he's ready to rock. I think this was my favorite illustration of the month. And then of course I'm layering up some more washi just to kind of center my drawing a little bit more on the page. It was a little bit off center and I find that washi is a great way to correct that visually. So on this page I'm setting up a spot for my pop culture favorites, my entertainment favorites like music and TV film, and then any event you know that might be in the news or even something that happens at my house, um, just whatever I want to remember there. And over here on the right, I've got a spot for mini pictures that my HP Sprocket pocket printer will print from my cell phone's camera roll. And I was really happy to find this little blank space here that I could fill up with my little cutesy doodle from the beginning again. The highlighted area is just for some freeform journaling, anything I wanna write in the memories area. And we're done, it's time for a flip through. Thank you so much for checking out my video today. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you're ready to set up your own January bullet journal spread and that maybe this even gave you a little inspiration. As always, I will post uh, individual photos of each spread on my Instagram. And if you have, you know, comments, questions, feedback, any of that good stuff, throw it in the comments and uh, I'll try to respond to you if I can because I really would like to get to know my viewers a little bit better this year. I do hope that you'll, you know, click like and all that stuff <laughs> if you enjoyed the video. And I hope that you'll subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this for me. I put out a plan with me every month and I'm also gonna be doing some illustration technique videos and some hand lettering videos in the upcoming weeks. I wish you a happy 2022 and as always, happy journaling.